Hi, quick note before the video starts, big trigger warning for this video, we're going to be talking about persecutory behaviour, um, targeting littles, so young alters, we're going to mention child abuse, no details, but it is discussed, we also do get quite distressed at some points in this video, I know, um, but yes, just please have a heads up. Um, from this point on, please be responsible for your own triggers and just be aware that this might be a heavier video for some of you. Also, the sound is a little bit weird in this video. It's fine. Uh, we're just working on it. I set the mic gain a little bit too high, but it's like fine. Just know going forward, it's going to be better. Maybe I should leave the uh, sound mechanics to Mary because she's so much better at it than me. But anyway, enjoy the video. Please be careful and we'll see you guys soon. Hello everybody, welcome back to Dissociated, this is Kaya. Um, I just wanted to like have a chat today about something I had a talk with about one of my system friends and they were saying that they didn't understand why alters in systems sometimes are nasty to younger alters, littles. I think that a lot of people who aren't familiar with DID or maybe just don't know a lot about DID assume that all littles are sort of like the ideal child of an alter that exists to relive the childhood that was lost out on due to trauma, which is why the DID developed, right? But littles can be any other kind of job. Like you can be a little and still be a protector, or you can be a little and still be a persecutor. If you don't know what persecutors are and you don't know much about littles, we've got two videos on them, um, one called I think it's called Evil Alters, which explains why persecutors aren't evil alters and goes into detail about what they are. And then I think the one about littles is called The Eternal Child. I'm pretty sure that one was made by Nin. So go and have a look at those if you don't know what I'm talking about. But there's loads of different kinds of littles. And I do want to, you know, make sure that everyone understands littles aren't... It's not a DDLG thing. It's not... A kink thing, it's not an intentional thing, it is part of dissociative identity disorder where the brain has dissociated part of the identity, fragmented part of the identity to contain an experience or a need or a role to help that child survive. So some child alters do hold either the memories or the joy or the freedom that children of that age should have had that the individual with DID didn't get to have. But child alters can also be trauma holders. They could be representative of how the person felt at that time, like a child, like they were being treated like a child or like they didn't have control, that they were being overruled, that they were naive, innocent, or perhaps had their innocence taken from them, for example. So why would alters in systems sometimes be cruel to children in the system? What reason would a system have to pick on or even have a specific persecutor for some system littles? I do want to make this very clear. I can only go off our experience and the experiences that we've had with other systems who have been around us in our life. This doesn't mean that it is the only way to have DID. Does it mean that it's the right way to have DID? There is no right way to have DID. Every system is different. We say it every time. Every system is different. We are not the one or be all experience for people with DID or OSDD. But this is the understanding that we've come to from our experience of having DID and having people around us who also have DID or OSDD, whether that be friends, acquaintances, people we've met through therapy in institutions or lovers. But the understanding that we've come to in most of the cases that we've seen, right, are some alters may hold a grudge against younger parts. Those parts may be, for example, a part that was out the most often when the body was a child. So it could have been the host at that time period. The host is just an alter who fronts the most often. Obviously, if you have DID, there are parts, alters that will be split off or are fragmented or dissociated otherwise from the, from the brain to create 
separate alters, alternate states of identity, and that usually happens when there has been a particular traumatic event or very, very high stress or otherwise something that the brain is unable to deal with. So they need to make a new alter, a new fragmentation to be able to hold either that memory or that possesses the abilities, the skills needed to survive that situation. So if a child, that is the child alter, goes through something extremely traumatic, let's say they were abused, then an altar that splits off or is otherwise formed because of the young altar experiencing that abuse may blame that little. They may feel like if that little, that altar had experienced the abuse in a different way, if they had escaped the abuse, if they had otherwise dealt with the abuse better, then that other altar wouldn't have had to exist in the first place. They wouldn't have had to experience that pain or that abuse for them. They wouldn't have to hold the agony of those trauma memories or even step in for other experiences that are similar to the original one. It can be nonsensical, obviously. If you're a child, well, any age, abuse is not your fault. Trauma is not your fault. In an ideal world, DID and OSDD wouldn't exist, and neither would PTSD or CPTSD. So there are alters who are disruptive or cruel to younger alters and systems. Not necessarily in every system, but it's not unusual. Some littles even have their own persecutors. So alters that exist to harass, upset, threaten, or harm younger alters. This could be in the inner world or the outer world that the harm is being caused. So again, a lot of people that we've come across seem to think that the inner world is this you know, ideal place for the brain to escape to, like a little meditation haven. Um, for some people, yes. For some DID systems, yes. But it's generally a way from our understanding for those different parts of the brain to communicate with each other, to process that trauma, to be able to interact in an environment where they're still dissociated from each other in terms of how the brain is functioning. Not all alters will be able to talk to each other in the headspace. They might not be able to see each other. There may be individual areas of the inner world that only certain alters can access, etc., etc. So that also means that alters can hurt each other in the inner world. Alters can fight. Alters can physically harm each other um, or emotionally harm each other. Some littles have a persecutor alter whose original reason for existing was to hurt that alter. Whether that was because the brain felt so ashamed at having experienced this trauma that it developed an alter to take it out on the little or it could be an interject of an abuser who copies the actions or the abuse that the external person was doing to that little and they then reenact it inside the inner world. It could be a way to force that altar to stay quiet. Um, the altar could make the little feel very, very ashamed of what happened to them, very much like it was their fault, like they mustn't say anything, they must be quiet, or perhaps they will threaten them, or maybe they would tell them that something bad would happen to them or people they love if they speak out about the experience. And this is another way that abusers can quite literally get into your head as a child to stop the child from speaking out about the abuse or in some cases even remembering the abuse, or trauma. DID is, can be caused by trauma, can be caused by abuse, abuse is trauma, but it doesn't necessarily have to be abuse. It just has to be repeated and sustained through childhood from before the ages of about seven to nine. So there's a number of reasons why alters might target littles. 
could be due to their own shame, their own anger and their own suffering and needing to take it out on somebody or it could be for a more Or it could be for a more practical reason, like trying to keep that altar quiet about the abuse they suffered. That could be because they were told to, because they were reenacting abuse or trauma caused by somebody external who told them the same thing, or it could be out of fear to keep their system safe. Perhaps they know that at this time it is not safe for the rest of the system to know about this abuse, or for external people to know about this abuse. A lot of the time, alters will hold one specific genre or just one specific trauma memory and not necessarily be aware of other trauma that has happened. While an alter who has experienced one kind of abuse might know that that abuse is not happening anymore and feel like it's safe to speak out, might not know that there is a whole other kind of abuse or trauma that's going on that makes it absolutely not safe to speak out about that. That could even be being performed by the same people or <laughs> happening in a very different time of life and That could even be being performed by the same people, or it could be happening at a completely different time of life, a completely different place. Um, people might not be involved full stop, could be a natural disaster, could be medical trauma, could be anything. Generally, littles are very highly protected within systems. But there are still complicated reasons why alters may target each other. Trauma processing is not easy. It's not fun. It can be extremely dark. It's not nice to hear children screaming inside your head and not knowing why. Or knowing that you mustn't know why, otherwise you're going to get triggered too. When I was Kyle, my job as primary protector partially revolved around sorting out any disputes between alters in the system. It also involved taking care of and protecting littles and being a nurturing, almost paternal, safe paternal figure to them. call it complicated would be a massive understatement. Alters can also be persecutory at any age. There could be child alters who hold very bad experiences or just very bad feelings and take that out on other alters, whether the alters are older or younger than them. There can be child alters who are an awful lot more mature than other alters in the system who identify as older ages. There can be littles who, ha who identify as the age of like five but have existed for 20 years and have 20 years of experiences but still are emotionally stuck at that age of five or whatever but they may be able to understand extremely complex situations um, be able to predict certain things and have experienced a lot Having DID is not just having alters. It's not just having people in your head. It's not just becoming a different person. It's a trauma disorder that comes from severe and prolonged childhood trauma. It's possible to live with it, yes. Some people with DID are wildly successful. But it's not a role-playing game. It's bloody scary. And it's extremely painful. And it's not something you can just take a break from when the camera isn't on. There are so many other symptoms that are involved in DID and OSDD. And a hell of a lot of comorbid disorders that generally come alongside it.
it's hard to talk about this kind of stuff. Because at that point, I can't go back in time and make sure that didn't happen. I can't do anything for these kids except be there and help them work it through. I can't take away the memories of what happened to them. I can't make it stop if they're screaming. All I can do is be with them. And promise to myself and my system that that will never happen again. And that's my job. That's all of our job. So please, if you're interacting with somebody who's a system, don't immediately jump to, oh, it's like split, or, oh, you have different people in your head. Who's the fun one? Who's the one who's most likely to flirt with me? Who, who's gonna be my favorite? Don't pity us either, because systems have survived a fuck ton in order to still be here. DID is a defense mechanism to survive things that some people wouldn't survive. Systems are capable. They have a lot on their shoulders, but they're capable. They're powerful. And if you have any kind of mental illness, and so are you. Even if you're just dealing with life. Well, right now is a mess. We need to stop tearing each other apart over things we don't understand. Even if it makes you feel better to do it. Yeah, I guess... I guess that about covers it, doesn't it? Um, hope the sound's okay. I'm not holding it, but I've messed around with some of the settings. I know Mary in her last video uh, was holding it. Um, I guess we'll see whether this works or whether I should just hold it every time. Um, I reckon Mary's gonna be on the channel more often. She's one of our regular fronters. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to making more content. It's just gonna be about stuff we feel is important to talk about. Stuff that we know, stuff that we've experienced. We're gonna talk about stuff that a lot of people don't wanna talk about. So yeah, if you're interested in that, a deeper look into DID, a real look into DID, without sugar coating, but also without disasterizing or catastrophizing, watch our shit. <laughs> oh, and also if you were wondering what this is, don't worry about it. It's not like some kind of fashion accessory, it's just back support. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, just I'm predicting some comments being like, "What? Well, what is that on on your shoulder?" Is it back thing. But yeah, um, lots of love, everybody. Stay safe. Hope you're taking care of yourself, and we will see you soon. Lots of love, everybody. Bye.